What's going on guys, this is Brian with Superman's Comics, and with me as always is my co-host Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo, and this is the newest edition of the Hot and Cold List, where we are covering the hottest and coldest trends in the comic book community. What's going on, Jack? Not a whole lot, Brian. Excited for this list. We are a couple weeks out of San Diego Comic Con. Things are starting to settle down, and it's all about the new releases now. Right. So, as always, we're going to bring in the contributors of this list. These are the guys that make up the hot and cold list. They are authors at comicbookinvest.com. they got multiple articles and great contributors. Right, Jack? Absolutely. This show offers a diverse group of writers covering everything from dollar bin digging to the hottest comic books on the market. Right. So, without further ado... We're going to get right into the hot portion of this list tonight, starting with Indie Spotlight author, Andy Tomberlin. Hey, what's up, everybody? Andy here with the Indie Spotlight series, CBSI. What's hot this week? Riptide from Red 5 Comics seems to be the one that's seeing a lot of movement right now with the, the movie or TV rumors getting stronger and stronger and more credible. Uh, this book is seeing a lot of movement right now. And the fact of the matter is they're drying up because there's just not a lot of them around. So right now you're seeing the, the first print go for around $25 to $29. And I, I honestly don't think it's going to slow down a whole lot right now. Uh, there's just not a lot of them out there. So if you come across that first print uh, at, at, a, at a decent price, it's, it's something that I would probably not pass up at this point. Uh, You'll probably see a, a little bit more spike when the option news actually does come down. Uh, but Riptide from Red 5 Comics, uh, that's that's my series to watch right now. Is it's definitely seeing a little bit of uh, movement. So if you can find some cheap ones, uh, go get them. So Jack, Andy, while he's messing with his record player, whatever it was in that video, is talking to us about Riptide, right? This is from what, Red 5 Comics? Right, Red 5 Comics. And Red 5 Comics is an imprint that essentially all of their comic books are designed for adaptation. Now, obviously, any imprint would love to see all of their comic books be adapted, um, optioned, and picked up, whether it's movie or TV. But Red 5, they're essentially approaching each release like they're trying to sell a concept for a movie or a TV show. And they've already seen some of their other releases, like The Rift, get picked up and get into development. Um, Riptide has seen some serious, serious momentum, as Andy mentioned, and uh, it was announced last year at San Diego Comic-Con, and this year they announced what potentially could be Riptide 2 in Riptide Draken, and it had similar buzz to when the original Riptide was announced. Right, but there's no doubt this title's hot right now. I think it's hot. I mean, eBay sold listings on it are hot. I have reservations with it, though, because... There was another book from Red 5, it was called Afterburn, and like Gerard Butler was even attached to it with Option News, and it got hot for a little bit, but a lot of people don't remember it. It's, I have a feeling that the trend might fall the same with Riptide, so if you're holding, I would get rid of them, because I don't think it's going to stay hot for, for too long. I think eventually, even when the movie comes out, the book's going to eventually fall flat back down to maybe a $10 book and sit there. But that's just my opinion. What do you think about that, Jack? I would tend to agree. Like even the Rift, which was probably kind of their biggest buzzworthy book uh, to date prior to this current Riptide movement, um, it got picked up, and you know a lot of people read the headline and saw the Rift option by Steven Spielberg, but they don't realize that it's actually part of an anthology series. So it's essentially going to just be one episode of TV. So we really don't know. While there's a lot of rumors behind Riptide's optioning. In what format is that going to be um, and on what streaming service or, or television network or um, movie production company we're going to see with that. And then as you mentioned with Afterburn, a lot of these options, you get the news and then they don't end up coming to fruition. Right. So we're really going to have to see. I agree with your assessment, Brian. If you're holding these books, now is the time to sell. You're going to make excellent profit and that's the name of the game if you're a speculator or a reseller. Uh, get in and get out. Right. So, not disagreeing with it being hot right now, because like we said, the figures prove it. It's just, I don't think it's going to stay a hot pick very long. So, definitely thank you for that pick, Andy. We're going to roll right into the next pick on this week's hot list. And it comes from Run the Table author, Clint Jocelyn. 
Good afternoon, CBSI members. This is Clint Joslin coming to you with my hot pick of the week. And my hot pick of the week this week is none other than Garth Ennis's The Boys. Uh, there's a couple of reasons, obviously, for the book being hot. Number one is the television series hitting on Amazon, which has not only been a critical acclaim, but I think fans of the comic and or regular fans, we'll get into that in a second, have really become uh, interested in the story. So you're seeing CGC 9.8, it's going for roughly around $300, uh, 9.8 blue labels. I think that a couple of things. Number one, the book is hard to get for obvious reasons. The color breaks. There's not a trillion copies of this book. The book is a little bit older. And I think, frankly, a lot of these books were readers more than anything. Uh, and then secondly, and more importantly, I think you're really bringing on a fan base of these for these uh, for the story that hasn't been in the comics before. Maybe has no idea who even Garth Ennis is. But I think that you're seeing the swell. You see it on, in the media. You see it on YouTube and people talking about this book who have no idea really that this was a comic or what the story um, source material was. But you're seeing people love this story. You're seeing people who are diehards and or people who are just casual members really taking to it. So I think this book is going to be hot and remain hot for a while. I don't think that you're going to see maybe the dives that you saw with Preacher um, because I think that people who watched Preacher liked it and then kind of fell off, not because the story was bad or anything, but I just didn't think that you're going to see the same uptake with this as you will with the boys. So my hot puck of the week this week is the boys. So Jack Clint's giving us the boys, the boys, not dem boys, right? Because Dallas Cowboys got no home here on simple man's comics. Actually not hail to the Redskins. I'm just going to say that before we get into it. Hail to the Redskins. But, and, and keep pounding Carolina Panthers. Yeah. But um, the boys hit Amazon this past week. There was previews for it. I saw previews going into like the movie theater before like the movies even started. Before the movie trailers, they had like the pre-show and the uh, was it Carl Urban, right? Yeah, yeah, Carl Urban. Yeah, they had a bunch of trailers with him on there, so it's kind of hyping me up for it. And then it hits on Amazon, and I binged it all within a night. And then I'm sure. No doubt this book is hot right now. A lot of people are searching for it online. You're seeing different sales on eBay right now. But what do you think about this pick, Jack? Well, I often joke, Brian, on this channel that I'm a good Christian boy. Now, this show is anything but that. But I have a little bit, I grew up Catholic, a little bit of a Catholic confession here. I never read The Boys, ever. Um, and my first time experiencing The Boys was through this Amazon show. And boy, did it blow me away. It is amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. I ended up doing exactly what Brian did, binged it just about straight through. Um, and it really leaves you wanting more. But I'm going to take a little bit of a different view of this one. Um, Clint talks about the book. And here on the Hot and Cold list in the Hot and Cold show, we like to talk about overall trends, the macro of the market rather than the micro. So I'm going to talk about the boys in general because I think there are two books being completely overlooked. And if you've seen the series, you may disagree with me. Number one has all of the hype. It's the book that's going for major money on the secondary market. But it's only the first appearance of A-Train, Huey, and The Butcher. Now, you may have realized I left a whole lot of important characters out. Well, that's because number two is the first appearance of Mother's Milk, or M.M., and the Frenchman, as well as the female super-powered character, really just known in the comics as the female. The real key, in my opinion, is issue three, where you get the first appearance of the set, the first appearance of Homelander, uh, the first appearance of the Deep, the first appearance of Moth, that is a major, major issue because you're essentially getting the first appearance of all the villains that take place in the first season leading into that second season that we know is coming based on how incredibly excellent that first season was. You're starting to see some sold listings creep up there, but I alerted our Patreon uh, followers to this in our Discord chat just a couple days ago as the series went live and we were able to find all kinds of copies available on the market undervalued of issues two and three because I think the general public has a tendency when these indie books hit to only go for that issue number one. But oftentimes there's first appearances in other issues. And this is a case where there are some first appearances in issue two and issue three that are under market value. Those copies are available. Also, 
even at the high market value, we're seeing issue three going for around $25. It still perils in comparison to the prices paid for issue number one. And I could argue is just as important and just as key as issue number one. So be on the lookout for issues number two and issue number three when you're at your LCS and you're digging in those bins, conventions, and shows this weekend. Right. And then one thing when I was watching the show, I kept watching Homelander going, where do I know this guy from? And I finally looked it up, and it's the guy who played Lucas Hood on the show Banshee from Cinemax. If you haven't watched Banshee on Cinemax, definitely check it out. I think it might even be, I don't know if it's on Amazon Video, but it ended a couple years ago. Fantastic show as well. But the boys are hot right now, and so are my Redskins. <laughs> Maybe. In, we'll see. In my imagination. But, so thanks, Clint, for that pick. And we are... All right, I want to. So thanks, Clint, for that pick. I'm going to roll right into the next pick this week from the Reading Pile author, Dan Piercy. Hey guys, Dan Piercy here of dpiercyscomics.com, home of the Reading Pile on CBS side. My hot pick for this week is Reaver by Justin Jordan. Now, there are hotter books out there, but. The numbers don't lie. Reaver is moving. Um, in particular, the one-stop shop variant that was list that was limited to 500 copies is going for about twice, and in some cases three times what it was originally sold for. Uh, not advocating going out and spending inflated prices for these books, but just an observation that the books are moving and that uh, the cult of Justin Jordan is growing. I'm actually really looking forward to reading this. Probably do that after I finish this video. <laughs> and uh, anyone remember Spread? Spread was a great book. And uh, if you check um, sales on Spread, um, to this day it's still selling. So um, yeah, like I said, the cult of Justin Jordan is growing. Hot pick this week, Reaver. See ya. So, Jack, this is a book that we've talked about before on the Bolo Show. It was in the weekly picks. We've discussed it. Dan's pick is <laughs> Dan's hot pick, Reaver number one from Image Comics. I enjoyed reading it. Um, I like the. A lot of people didn't like the art in it. I kind of like the art. Enjoyed the story. The, the only problem I have with it right now is we just have one issue to base it off of. So I'd like to see how that trend goes and at least get through the first arc and see if we're going to continue to pick it up. But the book is trending upwards on the secondary market. It has been for a couple weeks. What do you think about this, Jack? Well, I love Dan, but I don't love this pick. Because the reality is, just like you said, Reaver has only put out one issue. So on um, the Hot and Cold show, we like to highlight trends. And I don't know if we have enough of a sample size or information to be able to call this one a trend. How many books have come out and we've seen the number one shoot up in value but by the time issue two and three get released? They're not able to maintain that heat. I love Justin Jordan. I also enjoyed the book. The art didn't bother me the way it bothered some. But I think, again, the jury's still out whether or not this is truly going to be a property or whether it was just a hot issue. Um, so I am comfortable selling at today's current prices um, because you're going to make good money on it. And, and why hold it in hopes that the momentum continues when you know you can get out right now and make good money? But I'd also like to say something else. Be on the lookout for that one-stop shop variant. It's doing incredibly well on the secondary market. There aren't any variants for Reaver. The fact that One Stop Shop, a small retail operation, was able to have the foresight to go ahead and produce a store-exclusive variant for this hot book was incredibly thoughtful. And head to comicbookinvest.com because we've already run a contest for one copy, and there's a second chance contest going on right now on the site. So no denying the book is moving. The book is hot. So you tend to agree with me. We just like to see a bigger sample size and see how it goes. Yeah. I, for one, am rooting for it. I'm a big fan of Justin Jordan. Had the chance to meet him at Baltimore Comic Con a few times. Great guy to talk to. Loved Luther Strode. So I'm rooting for this comic book to continue to trend upwards. And I'm looking forward to the next issue. With that being said, we're going to roll right into the next pick on the hot list this week. And it comes from Mel from the Mighty Mel V YouTube channel. Yo, 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 Mel V here, Mighty Mel V here with your hot and cold pick of the week. Hot. Got 
hey man, I gotta, I gotta go with those man. i following this book for a minute, and I'm starting to see it's, it's starting to heat up on the secondary market. Enzo Garza, great guy. I was very passionate about his projects, and I wish him all the best, man. So hot this week for me. Good. So Mel, and he's not the only one, but he's talking about Gut Ghost that released today. There is a lot of buzz around it. Me, personally, I feel like I'm missing something on this because I'm not, I don't have the attraction that I guess a lot of other people do to this book. I don't know if it's my unfamiliarity with the character or what, but there is trending buzz on it. Your RCN already pre-sales Tuesday night before the book came out today. Um... The secret variant that was on Scout's site. There was a virgin variant, I believe. A whole bunch of different covers for this. But what are your thoughts on this, Jack? This is a complicated one for me. First off, shout out to Mel V, host, like you said, of the Mel V YouTube channel, <clears throat> who had me on his channel this week for the It's the Drunken Chat, son. And uh, I really want to say that I like this book, but the more I kind of watch this release, the more I'm kind of losing interest. Um, first off, there was talk about a secret variant being released this week. And I get excited for secret variants. Things like that tend to spark interest in the hobby. But it's not really a secret if two-thirds of the copies are held back by the publisher and sold on their site. And that's what Scout did. And they've sold out now of those two, 200 of apparently the 350 copies that were available um, for sale. So, uh, you know, it's not really a secret if people know about it. It's going to cause people to go into their LCSs and hunt for the book, but we all know the way LCSs are. What it's really going to cause is those LCSs to raise the price who are able to receive those 100 copies that are available on the market. And then you mentioned the web store exclusive. Scout has a web store exclusive as well. They also had an ash can. I was able to check out an ash can at Heroes Con. Um, and the book seemed kind of interesting it's a little different it's a little out there but i want to give a shout out also to topher check out his instagram at voice of rao um he highlighted the first appearance of of gut ghost isn't actually in this gut ghost number one gut ghost was released in a self-published form it was released in heavy metal magazine and it was also released in its own com foreign comic a few years ago so you know, it's not a first appearance. It's really just a number one on Scout. So being hot, I, yeah, I guess you could say it's hot. It's definitely probably the most talked about indie releasing this week other than, say, Canto or TMNT 96, if you want to count those as um, indies. But other than that, I would say long-term wise, since it's not a first appearance, as rare as those other appearances may be, once you start competing with an ash can, a uh, self-published release, a magazine first appearance, as well as a smaller print publishing foreign first appearance, I think you're starting to muddy the speculation waters. And I know Mel V was very excited about Gut Ghost, man. He's talked about Ghost forever. And I know that this is one that he's hyped for. And the prices on the secondary market, we're filming this on Tuesday. Books don't release till tomorrow. But the pre-sale prices for this book are outrageous and the book sold out, the secret variant, and the web store exclusive on Scout's website, as well as the regular cover. So there's no doubt speculators are out there buying this book up. But this is one of those books that makes me wonder, are all the books being sold to speculators, or are there actually readers and collectors who want this book? And a lot of times when it's just the speculators buying up books, there's nobody then to resell them to, and people get left holding the bag. It's too early to tell whether or not that's the case here or whether or not we're looking at a true heater of a book. And mail me on to something, and certainly there's money to be made right now on Gut Ghost if you ordered through Diamond or you pre-ordered through your LCS or you grabbed one off the retail shelf or even if you were able to grab some of those rare variants off the Scout website. But, you know, it's a little early to say I think this is another one I'm skeptical of. So thank you, Mel, for that pick. I'm going to roll right into the next pick on the hot list. Coming from Covertoons author, Cool Mike Morello. Hey boys and girls, Mike Morello from CBSI's Covertoons with my hot pick. This week I've got to go with House of X number one. I'm really excited that this was a good solid start to the first of both miniseries from Hickman. Um, I know not everyone is a huge Hickman fan. That uh, There's a lot of little insert pages and, and, and things which break up the monotony in my opinion, but I know other people don't love it. Um, and... Uh, 
you know, sorry, Dan Piercy, to steal your reading pile thunder, but I thought it was a really solid read um, and a really good start. Uh, I think it's a really great time for a proper reboot to return the X universe to the proud book it once was. Um, before we get any MCU movies, um, now is the time to do it. And it looks like Hickman has a multi-year plan, not only through these uh, two six-issue miniseries, but through the main title over the next couple of years, as well as um, sort of B-level titles, which he will retain, as far as I know, he will retain creative control or editorial control over, which is, which is actually really good for it to be in the hands of sort of one mind like it once was. Um, so I, I, I can't even track how many copies of this thing have sold over the last week. I tried to look and it's, it's hundreds, if not thousands of copies. What I thought was great was people were rabid to get this thing in stores. It shows that there's still a huge fan base for all things X related. Um, people didn't care what cover they bought. I saw people buying blanks and they weren't trying to get sketches. They were just happy to get the thing in their hands so that they could read it. Um, which is a good sign, I think, for this moving forward, for the popularity of the series, for the popularity of the characters, for the future possibility of the popularity of films and spec for X. Um, uh, obviously, we've seen it with the Bronze Age stuff, and like Giant Size and all that um, Phoenix stuff, even regardless of a poor movie. Um, it didn't seem to matter. That stuff's still selling well also. Um, one thing that I wanted to keep on people's radar, um, obviously, Giant Size X-Men is a tough way for you to get the Krakoan uh, sort of history. But don't forget about this little jobby, this journey into mystery that came out, which uh, was The Birth of Krakoa. Um, and I think that that might be a, a interesting book down the road, depending on, on how reliant they are on it in the series. So don't sleep on that book. That was the variant, by the way. I don't have the A cover to show. Um, but, um, but that could also sort of be in tandem with, with this. So it's hot for now. It looks like it's going to continue to be hot. And, uh, and I love it. I'm excited about it. So hopefully you are too. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks. So Jack, I'm not sure if you're aware of it yet, but this is the first pick on this week's hot list that's not an indie pick. Now, that is true, and it comes from comic heavyweight Marvel Comics, and uh, certainly I think the print run of this book is going to reflect that. <laughs> Having said that, I almost wanted to hate on this pick because it isn't quite doing what we would normally expect to see from a hot pick on the secondary market. Um Yes, books are selling very briskly, but they're basically selling for cover price. A little more when you include shipping, though. Um, and ra most ratios are going below ratio. But a, a quick glance on eBay's sold listings will show you exactly what Mike is saying. Number one, the sheer number of sales you're seeing. It's incredible. Um, number two, you're starting to see those prices rise a little bit, albeit slow. But that's the great thing about the hot and cold list is you get to see trends. And I think the bigger trend that Mike brings up is X-Men. X-Men as a property has been kind of cold for a while. The movies didn't do well. X-Men keys haven't performed the way that we would hope. And I think what this does is it really gives us a chance to look at X-Men in a whole new light. Now, you know I'm an X-Fan, and I know you're not really a big X-Fan. But those of us that are diehard X-Fans now have a reason to be excited, now have a reason to have something to champion. And I'd also like to bring up another point is I really wonder about the cover A, if that isn't going to become a key issue down the road. Is this mini series isn't going to become a series that X fans feel like they have to have. And it's been a while since Marvel's had one of those from kind of a crossover title. But I really think that they may be onto something with this one. And of course, since this video is debuting here tonight, Wednesday night, Powers of X hit store shelves, and I kind of expect it to do similar. So be on the lookout for that one. Be on the lookout for House of X. If you didn't grab it, don't sleep on it. If you can find it at cover price at your LCS, I think the time to grab it is now as we're seeing that book really trend upward. Right. I think there's no doubt that the book is hot, and it could be one of those pivotal books that down the road people often refer back to. One of those, I mean, they, they solicit it. As kind of being one of those books, but we all know how solicitations go and what their whole yeah. purpose for is. But this could be one of those books that kind of define X Men mutant history. Um, so there's no doubt that while it might not be super spiking on the secondary market, it is one of the hot titles and hot trends within comic books right now. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and I think the, the reason why maybe some of the incentives aren't spiking uh, above ratio versus. 
the way cover A is doing really well may just be indicative of the fact that there's a lot of variants for this book. Um, so people are picking and choosing. We talked about that on the Bolo show last week where you like a variant, I like a different one. And I think that that's kind of indicative of what's happening on the market. But I think that the main cover is the one that I think might be the one to grab and put away. Um, and yeah, when you talk about an X book that kind of is one that we look back on years to come, I, I hate to make this comparison because it's so dangerous, but it really reminds me of like that Jim Lee X-Men number one. Not in print run, but in importance. When Jim Lee took over the X-Men, it breathed new life into the series. Uh, Claremont was the man. Claremont and Byrne, they did their thing for a number of years. But the title had started to kind of get a little bit more stale. And they came in, gave it the shot of the arm when we got that Jim Lee, new Jim Lee run. And um, I really think we may be on to a similar thing right here with Jonathan Hickman. Right. And if you're talking about the regular cover being one of the covers to look out for, then you could look at, what was it, the premiere variant? That was like the variant of the regular cover that was, what, one per store or whatever the... Right. One per, not even one per store, but you had to have the party for it, right? The Midnight yeah. Mass party to get it. But So, yeah, great pick. But we got something else also. A lot of people might not know this, but Cool Mike Morello has got a little bit of green thumb, and we got a little documentary for you to watch. All right. Here outside planting my House of X and Powers of X Krakoa seeds. Sowing the seeds of a better mutant tomorrow. Now I'll just wait for a portal to open so I can make my way to Krakoa. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Little Mike Green Thumb there. You seem pretty excited. Mike, definitely let us know if you see a portal open up and we'll be heading over to your house because take us with you. Jack, anything to say about anything to say about the seed planting? Mike is a character, absolutely. Uh, I think his video segments are some of my favorite on a weekly basis. But uh, boy, he outdid himself uh, planting the Krakoa seeds this week. Yeah, what's fun, what's funny about it is it's like, okay, I think he's joking, but he does it so sincere that it's just, yeah. I want to see how that grows, how those seeds do. Make sure yeah, you keep well, us up to date. Yeah, we'll have to update you guys on the channel with the uh, Krakoa seed yeah. growth. I want a webcam over there like they do for like the birth of baby giraffes and crap, but I want to see it for these Krakalaka right, the li seeds. Krakoa live stream. Seeds. With that being said, we're just going to roll right into the next pick. Keep this moving along because, <laughs> yeah, we're going to move it right along with the next pick from the Usual Suspects author, Peter Renna. What's up, everybody? This is Peter Renner, writer of Usual Suspects, Dollar Bin Digging, and Wizard Rewind with CBSI. And my hot pick this week will be Farmhand. Uh, with last week's option news that AMC's picking this up to a series, this book has been moving all over the place on eBay with the 60-plus sales since Friday. Uh, granted, prices have come down a little bit from those initial $25 sales, closer around the 15 to 20 now. But like I said, it's still moving sets. There's many variants. But uh, this book is just still moving quite a bit so get yourself some copies get yourself the run read it it's a great read uh it'll make a good series if they do it right it's quirky it's good it's entertaining i can't wait to see it myself so that's my hot pick for this week farmhand so not like that popular facebook game farmville but we are talking about farmhand so at least with this comic you don't need to be sending messages to like your parents and your kids and stuff saying hey help me feed my pigs we're talking about the image book farmham from rob gilroy right 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 and, and gilroy's most known for his work on, as the artist on the ever popular indie series chew and here he is both 
artist and writer. This is a creation all of his own. And uh, it really, as soon as it was released, it had that reader buzz. Yeah. And again, we talk about that reader buzz is important. Now, it didn't really pop on the secondary market. And Peter's right. This book has kind of dropped from its like 25 to 30. It was going for it down to about 15 to 20. But at the same point, this was a 3 to $5 book just a week to two weeks ago. So it's definitely hot. It's seen the buzz. And it's in demand. And that's the key is that people want this book because – most people who have had a chance to read this book really feel like this is going to make an amazing series. Now, I've heard the next Walking Dead used with this one, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's been picked up by AMC. I think that's a dangerous comparison to make because, Brian, uh, you got to be able to attest to this. Where as long as you and I have been in the speculation game, as long as you and I have been CBSI members talking about seven, eight years now, how many times have we been told this book is the next Walking Dead? I won't, yeah, and I won't even say Walking Dead. I kind of like how, how big, cover your ears, Sean, like it, but how big of a disappointment was Preacher on AMC? Right, and that's and that's absolutely true. Now I will say, um, series producers Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen really kind of found their way with the boys, as we talked about earlier. And I think if they didn't kind of make those mistakes with Preacher then they might not have given us the uh, version of the boys that we all really, really enjoyed. Um, so I think that's part of producing and, you know, anything you do, you're going to get better as you go. But um, And I think a lot of people might not even be re really realize that Seth Rogen is the man behind both of those shows. But um, I agree that uh, Preacher was underwhelming uh, if you really love that comic the way a lot of us do. Um, but I'm hopeful for Farmhand. Absolutely. I think Raw Copies, nine eights. it's another one where I feel would feel really good about selling at the prices they're at right now. Um, I'm not a go-along guy with books like this. When you, To me, your jump point is the moment you can make really good profit. And if you grab this one on pre-order for $2 and change or $3, you're at that point right now where you can hit 15 to 20 to, if you sold last week, 25 to 30. But at the same point, um, maybe you hold a couple back in hopes that AMC is able to deliver a monster. Because they're definitely looking for that counter-programming to go with Walking Dead. And Walking Dead's not going anywhere on AMC, regardless of what happened with the comic. But Farmhand kind of fits in that mold and could be a good one-two punch for AMC. But it's something that we're going to have to wait and see. Right, and I'll go along and say, like, these will be, they're in dollar bin boxes sitting out there right now. The first initial hype cycle of the option news has kind of hit its peak, starting to come down a little bit. So if you do find these in those dollar bins, just stash them away. Don't try yeah. to, you know, because once the more news, casting news, there's going to be another cycle where it's going to get another bump and you can make more of a profit at that point. And if you haven't read it, it's a fantastic read, so make sure you do that as well. Pick some up for your collection, but if you're looking to make money on it, it's getting to that point where the first hype cycle, to me, is kind of starting to slow down a little bit. And then you can catch it on the next bump. Our last pick for the hot list this week comes from the mass speculator himself, Topher S., author of True First Article on comicbookinvest.com. What's up, everybody? It's Topher S., the mass speculator, reading comics in my favorite spot in the house, here with your hot pick of the week. This week, I'm going with Gore, who first appeared in Thor, God of Thunder number two. There's a rumor that Gore is going to be the bad guy in Thor 4. That's right, the God Butcher, probably the best of any modern Thor villain. Right now, I would buy this issue and I would hold it. It's already starting to get hot, but you can still find it for a relatively good price now. That's it for this week. See you next time. So Topher, the mass speculator, is talking about Gore, the God Butcher from Thor. What do you think about this? Well, you know what? I think um, I love this pick, but I was kind of stunned when I saw how much Thor God of Thunder number two is going for. We're talking about 55, 60, 65 dollars sales. So people are really all in on this. And, you know, it's, it's a character that started off with serious reader buzz. There's definitely those movie rumors. And you got to be careful with movie rumors because rumors tend to inflate prices and they don't always stay. How many times have we seen this character been rumored to be a villain in this movie or this character be a rumor to be a villain in that movie and then it doesn't end up panning out the way we would all expect either look way at, look at Deadpool ahead. 2 right <laughs> right either way I think Gore the God Butcher is a good investment 
because the buzz for this character is so high, I do think we're going to see it at some point. But I agree with what Topher said, that I think those copies are still out there. Um, Thor God of Thunder was a run where, like, almost the whole run was in dollar bins for a while. And think about how many of these issues have popped off now. I'm talking about issue two, issue five and six, and now 25, as well as 12 seeing its day at one time. At this point... I'm searching for Thor God of Thunder runs in every discount box that I'm going to. Anything cover price and below that I see Thor God of Thunder, I'm flipping for those. And at this point, I think a lot of dealers overlook these issues because they had them in their dollar bins back in 2014, 2015 when these issues were coming out. So be on the lookout for those issues. I still think they're out there like Topher said. Um, and I think that you know it's a good investment in the future. At $55, $60, I'm a little more leery. It's something that I would kind of worry about putting that kind of money into a modern first appearance, especially of a villain, because we know that villains don't tend to last long in the movies. Thanos was a real unique situation in that he spanned multiple movies. I think uh, Gore the God Butcher wouldn't probably be that type of villain. I think he would be more exclusive to Thor movies, being that, you know, his whole origin and, the, and his issues always are related to the gods, so it plays into Thor better. Um, but I definitely agree, this is red hot. If you've got those number twos, take advantage of this uh, rumor hype, and now's an opportunity to sell and make some serious coin. 55 60 $65, that's serious money for, like I said, a book that oftentimes was sitting in dollar bins. So there's Topher's hot pick, and we're going to roll right now into the cold list this week and we're going to start with andy tomlin the indie spotlight writer hey what's up cbsi nation andy back with the indie spotlight series comicbookinvest.com what's cold this week x lie fields <laughs> that the haters wanted them to take off keen spot thought they had something big there i thought they did too for a little bit but um it is definitely cooled off. I watched a set go for today for $1.50. I watched another auction, sat there at $0.99 cents and did nothing uh, and ended with no bids on it. So what's cold this week? X Life Fields, and I don't see them heating back up. So uh, uh, Rob held through the hater wave there. So uh, X Life Fields, cold. So Jack, here's a book that had multiple different covers. There was a blank variant. There was an incentive variant, which is basically a cover swipe of New Mutants 98. Look like these books, though, they're really niche, right? Whether they take off or not or create buzz, it's hard to kind of tell. But there's that novelty there. I mean, everyone knows it's kind of a parody of Rob Liefeld, which I can get behind. But what do you think about it, Jack? Well, I think Simpleman's Comics family knows I am a Rob Liefeld guy. So I'm going to go ahead and brag on this one and say, if you come at the crown... Watch out, because you're going to get burned. And people tried to come at Liefeld with this book. But look, honestly, I think you, you, you said it best. Um, you're talking about a parody book. I mean, look at the history of parody books. They're an important part of comics history and comics lore. But we're talking from a speculator perspective. We are CBSI, comicbookinvest.com. So I'm assuming most of you out here watching, you like to make money on these comic books. And you're here to speculate, invest, resell. And uh, I like to talk as much as we can on this channel about process. And, um, you know, when we're talking about the process of selling, I tend to stay away from parody books. They have their short run. People are talking about them and they hit the shelves. Keen Spot is a smaller publisher. So there was a huge distribution of this book. I talked on the Bolo show about how even its placement in previews can affect the amount of orders that stores put in for this book. And... I think we saw when it came out, people wanted to check it out. You mentioned the New Mutants 98. There's also a, uh, I think there was a Youngblood yeah. homage. There was a uh, New Mutants 87 homage. So definitely some cool covers. Um, as a Liefeld fan, I think it's kind of funny. I like the cover A where he's, uh, physic Liefeld's physically on the cover. Um, like... Right, but it's one of those things where um, this is what happens. Whether we're talking the AOC book or we're talking the Trump Titans books. Um, these parody books just, they have their moment where they're polarizing because that's what they do is like they, they try to get the community's attention through kind of shock and um, 
you know, that kind of stuff. And it gets gets the people's attention. But we talk about this all the time on the channel, man. People's attention is short-lived. The other thing is Andy highlighted some specific auctions. It's the danger of running auctions on eBay. When you're running an auction on eBay, you really only want to do that with a hot book. You're always in danger of an auction going below market value. It can go above market value if you're talking about something that's hot and in demand. But in order for you to sell a book well at auction, you need two people who really want a book and those two people to compete with each other. And when you're trying to auction off items like you know books that have lost their luster, every now and again, you can get burnt with a $1.50 auction set. Uh, whoever that was who sold that set, I'm sure they are disappointed to have taken a loss on that one. But the reason why we talk about this with the Simpleman's Comics family, the YouTube comic community, CBSI Nation is... You got to learn from your mistakes. When you make a mistake, when you invest in something that doesn't work out, when you list something on eBay in a certain way that doesn't really work, all you can really do is chalk it up as a loss, take that L, and learn from it. So all of you that invested in this book and thought this book was going to be a big moneymaker, hopefully it taught you a lesson and you'll watch out the next time you see one of these parody books get released. doesn't mean you can't make some money on it, but you got to be quick. You got to drop them quick when you see the books profitable and that's why we talked about that with several other picks on this list where both brian and i have said well maybe it's time to cash out because a book is hot because you don't want to be sitting here holding books when they come onto this portion of the list yeah and i'll say andy had a second hot pick this week and that is wearing some other t-shirt other than some crappy clemson school appreciate that i see you burn that clemson shirt good to go go yeah Nolan's you're welcome way. You're welcome back on the channel, and I still have my University of South Carolina Gamecock shorts on. They're my favorite recording shorts, so absolutely, we don't support Clemson on this channel. Yeah, and don't listen to Jack, because he doesn't know what school he wants to support. He's got like Connecticut hat. He's That's like, right. <laughs> I got my Connecticut hat. My Connecticut hat. I'm originally from Connecticut, he's, so I got my Connecticut hat on. He's a Connecticut Right, and then I got my Gamecock shorts my father played baseball at Connecticut, so this is a Connecticut baseball hat. And then I've got my Gamecock shorts where I went to college. So, yeah, I'm a little mixed up here, but uh, it ain't Clemson either way, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but with that being said, we're going to go ahead and roll into the next cold pick, and it comes from Run the Tables author Clint Jocelyn. Good afternoon, CBS Side Nation. Clint Jocelyn coming with my cold pick of the week, and my cold pick of the week this week is She Venom. Uh, more specifically, Venom Center Take All number three, first appearance. That book, when Venom was announced that there was rumblings that she was going to be in it, blew up to five six hundred dollar range. That CGC nine point eight now can be had for under two hundred dollars. Honestly, you could probably get it for closer to one fifty if you found the right seller. That book is cold right now, but the good thing is, is that now is the time to buy. You look at the parallels with Lady Thor, right? The last couple of weeks, we've seen what that book has done since the announcement of SDCC. They've blown up to Kingdom Come. They're way over bloated, and frankly, if you're paying for those books right now. You shouldn't be unless you've got expendable income. Uh, but this Venom Center Take All number three, now is the time to buy. Michelle Williams was in the last one. I'm sure she'll be in it again. We'll see her back in in some kind of form within the Venom Marvel Universe or Sony Universe, wherever it ends up being down the road. Uh, it's too popular a character or not. The variants too for her, some of the storylines are really in low demand right now too that can be bought. So. I would really take a hard look. It's an awesome cover, number one. Number two, it's not easy to get at 9.8. Number three, it's cheap right now. So it's cold, but it's worth buying. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything, but I wanna help you guys out in any way I can. So I'd be looking for that book right now. Scoop it up while you can. My cold pick of the week this week, Venom Center Take All, number three. So we have Clint talking she Venom. Do you think this is a good cold pick or do you think this is a hot pick? What do you think, Jack? Not only do I think this is a good cold pick, I'll say this is the best cold pick on this list. This is exactly what we want out of our cold picks. We're talking about something that was very hot, that is now cold, but has tons of opportunity to buy. I cannot agree with Clint Moore about the value where this book is sitting at. There's real value, meat on the bone for us speculators and resellers. I think most of us were shocked when Michelle Williams turned into uh, – she Venom in the Venom movie. I think that caught most of us off guard. We didn't see that that move coming. But what that did is plant the seed that this is possible. We could see She Venom in more than just one quick cameo uh, sequence. Also, if you're reading Donny Kate's current run, 
you know what happened the second she puts on that symbiote and becomes she venom they literally we're doing more than planting the seed in the movie we're planting the seed with her and could this lead into dylan brock could we see more she venom in the future i think absolutely we also got to look at what happened with spider-man far from home this was really the, the a bigger collaboration between sony and disney where we got to see not only did we have we seen Tom Holland as Spider-Man show up on the MCU, but now we got to see Robert Downey Jr. Uh, in the last in the last couple movies show up in in within the Sony universe. We got to see um, John Favreau and his happy character show up in in the Spider-Man universe. Spider-Man just crossed a billion dollars, and the rumor is we're going to see more kind of passing back and forth of characters between Sony and Disney. And all that does is make all of these kind of Venom-related properties even more valuable. Will we see Tom Hardy in the MCU? We don't know. Will we see Tom Hardy go on and, and, and fight Spider-Man? I would expect at some point we will. And all of this is going to bring attention back on She-Venom again. And I agree. Those issues may be undervalued right now but there's a very good chance they'll see their time in the sun again and another thing i want to bring up is they just released her first appearance in a true believers format marvel doesn't do that for no reason when they do that they want people to get familiar with the character so i think there could be more coming down the pike with she venom uh i'd be on the lookout for that one take a look at those first appearances take a look at those variants like clint mentioned um I really think there's meat left on the bone and there's money to be made with she Venom. Right, so great pick from Clint and we're gonna roll right into the next cold pick and that's from Dan Piercy of The Reading Pile. Now my cold pick for the week are a bunch of books that I really have dug. It's these DC cover B cardstock portrait covers. Um, reactions to them have been pretty polar. A lot of people think they're d stupid. And there are odd individuals like myself who really dig them. Uh, I really love this Gorilla Grodd cover. This Cheetah cover, I was kind of eh, on, but it's really grown on me. I've always dug this Harley Quinn cover. I had the uh, the Captain Cold cover that was on the Flash book last week in my hands. And I am on the hunt for uh, that Terrifics book that had Bizarro on the cover. I don't think these are going to ever increase in price. The, they're just odd little books that uh, I think are great. So that's my cold pick for this week. These DC Cover B cardstock Year of the Villain portrait covers. I'll see ya! Jack, so there we have it. There's Dan's cold pick. I agree with a lot of it. There's Year of the Villain covers. Great covers. And we can always go back to what we say. Probably sell good in sets down the, the road. Um... Dan's mentioned it as hot pick selling sets, but I do think there's going to be a couple outliers in these years of the villains, depending on the print run of some of the titles that they're for, that might be a few outliers that catch a little bit of heat down the road. Not many, but I think that bizarre one from the Terrifics is one that I think could be one of those that raise, raise in value a little bit. But what are your thoughts? Oh, man, Dan. Love you, brother. Don't be mad at me. I hate to do this to you again. I don't like this pick that much. And the reason why is because, you know, to call something cold, you're basically saying kind of like it's not huge on the secondary market. But last week we talked about, you know, DC cover Bs being cold. Um, so this is a little bit redundant because we know DC cover Bs haven't really been taking off on the secondary market. We've talked about it on just about every show that we have on this channel. Um, so this isn't an unex, none of these results with these books are really unexpected. And I also have to argue where he said that the, the response of people have been polar. Um, I run our Instagram account along with Brian Wood, uh, my co-host right here. And we get a chance to check out our, our kind of statistics with our Instagram account on each post. One of the most popular series of posts I've done in the last several months was the unveiling of these covers. The hype and and the amount of comments we got, and you guys can see that. Go look back at those posts at Comic Book Invest CBSI. 
Look at the amount of comments and how excited people were for that Bane Batman 75 cover, for um, that Teen Titans 32 Lobo cover. A lot of these covers are really beloved by people. Um, I think the hotness or coldness on the secondary market is more due to the how readily available these books are on the secondary market. But I'll tell you this. If I know LCS is like I think I do, I think the fact that these books were a dollar more means there's probably less of them than there are a typical DC cover B. Still plenty for the market, but less than typical. And I think that could be the reason why, like you mentioned, certain of these titles, like the Terrifics variant with Bizarro, that are popular cover art, could see their time in the sun. And I also think, you know, DC cover Bs at this point, they are what they are. They don't hit huge on the secondary market. They're not hard to get. But they are collected, and they don't seem to sit on shelves forever and ever and ever. So you and I are believers that they're going to see their time in the sun. I stand by that feeling that that's going to happen. Um, are they hot on the market? No. Um, but I don't quite know if it's kind of – it may be a bit too early to call them cold. I'll say one other thing that kind of add to the coldness of it is – they're a dollar more, right? But they're also cardstock. So when you have cardstock, you're probably going to have a lot more nine eights than you normally would. So people collecting that. So there's going to be a higher supply. Will it match the demand? But I do think there's going to be a lot more nine eights out there. But it's always fun to watch and see. Buy what you like. That's the perfect time to do it if you're interested in these covers. And with that being said, we're going to roll into Cool Mike Morello's Cold Pick. Hey, everybody. Mike Morello again with my cold pick uh, for the week. And this week I'm going um, with more of a cautionary tale. Um, I'm going to focus on Josh Middleton this week, but it's really not just about Josh Middleton. It's, uh, it's sort of about all these artists, these modern artists that get really hot. Um, they have a couple of great books that come out uh, cover-wise. They go up double, triple cover price right away. Maybe they skyrocket from there. Maybe they sort of hover around the $10, $15 range, but eventually they all kind of come down. Um, other than maybe a few early, early rarities from their early part of their career. Um, and we've seen it with Josh Middleton a lot. He, the buzz on his stuff was amazing there for almost a year, where every cover he released was hot, whether it were Batgirl or Aquaman or any of those titles. Um, and, you know, I'm going to highlight this one, which obviously is still the book everybody wants. It's still his sort of famous book from the last couple of years. But even this book can be gotten for 35 or 40 bucks right now, raw which is unbelievable considering what the prices were at at one point. Um, and uh, so I think even a book like this, that most people probably still perceive to be as an expensive book, really is not an expensive book anymore. Um, and it just shows that there is really a short shelf life for a lot of these sort of hot books and that they come crashing back down. If you love an, an artist, by all means, collect that artist. Um, I think you guys know me. I will pretty much buy anything that Jenny Frizen does. Um, and I really don't care if it's ever worth anything. And I think that's sort of the message is to just buy, really do buy what you like and, uh, and don't worry about future value. And if you're going to spec on stuff and you're going to buy these hot artists, get in and get out really fast because they get cold pretty fast. There's nothing wrong with Josh Middleton. His art is still fantastic. Um, but he's just not the hot commodity this week like he once was, say, a year ago. Um, and like I said, we've seen that with a lot of other artists. So just be careful about super hot artists and, uh, and, and whether they're the flavor of the week or whether they have a little bit more staying power than that. And then they might sort of sustain their values over the years. Um, you know, so just pay attention to what prices are doing. And I think uh, you'll be in good shape. So anyway, that's my cold pick for the week. Hot artists that crash quickly. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot for that, Mike, and I'm glad to see you got in from the garden and changed. You do see a lot of Milton variants that have cooled off, but I think that comes down to the same trend we see a lot of times in comics where if you see one comic by a publisher get by if you see one comic by a publisher get hot, they start buying a bunch of other titles from that publisher think that are coming out thinking that's gonna get hot. So if they see one title from an artist that gets hot, which was that Batgirl, what, twenty three? They go around and they turn around and next thing they're, they're buying Batgirl 24, 25, 26, thinking there's going to be that same heat there. The covers might be just as gorgeous, but they don't get the same heat that the, that the one before it did. Well, I think 
I agree with Mike's pick, but for maybe some different reasons than what you and Mike talked about. Um, you know, I think that Joshua Milton is the reason DC cover bees are cold. And it's not his fault. It's just the way things have gone. Um, those books got, that first Batgirl 23 got so hot and was going for so much money. It changed LCS's perspective on those books. It changed uh, speculators' perspective on those books. And it's like you said, people in comic speculation, they're trend followers. So sometimes we can jump on a trend too early. And they saw the heat that that book brought. And next thing you know, every Middleton variant was so readily available that even some of his most amazing Batgirl variants have ended up in the dollar bin. Well, I would also say... Go ahead. It also doesn't... I mean, I won't say it doesn't help, but you saw the artwork for those variants well before FOC every time as well. So people right. were ordering them left and right. But again, I think that's indicative of what happened because early on in the Rebirth run, we didn't see that be the case. Uh, that those those that cover art wasn't available. Batgirl 23 was such a hot book and was in so much demand that it really changed the way everybody did business with these cover Bs. And now we're seeing what we saw uh, kind of continue where these books come out, People love them. People love the art. Joshua Middleton's one of like the best artists out right now, putting out consistent work. Something that's completely slept on is this Aquaman run. He's put out just some incredible variants on Aquaman that haven't gotten any buzz. I'm actually a believer long term in Joshua Middleton. I think if if his contract with DC would have run out right when this DC cover B crash happened, post kind of Batgirl 24, and he would jump to Marvel and started doing incentive variants. There's a good chance we'd still be talking about Joshua Middleton as hot. Yeah. Does his books belong on the cold list? Yeah, because of where the secondary market value is. But I think, again, it's more indicative of the DC Cover B program being popular with collectors, but not being popular with resellers, with speculators on the secondary market. And for that reason, I think that's why we see Dan's pick on this list, as well as the DC Cover pick that we previously had on this list um so i really think that it's a good pick it's exactly in tune with the market but i really don't put it on joshua middleton and i would say don't sleep on those middleton covers because all it's going to take is him moving to another publisher like marvel putting out a variant that gets hot again and he'll do it because his cover art is incredible and people will start running to those back issues those dc cover bees and grabbing them up so I've been grabbing up those dollar bin books. If I see those Joshua Middleton covers for a dollar, I'm grabbing them. Yeah, and then even the, the covers that were before the DC cover bees that a lot of people weren't. It's like some people weren't aware that Joshua Middleton did covers before DC cover bees and the Batgirl right. and the Aquamans. There's some great covers out there that he's done before that you can find for super cheap. So if you're a fan of Joshua Middleton, I would definitely be hunting those covers because they're hitting dollar bins. Some of them rose. Of course, after that 23 came out, a lot of Josh Middleton covers rose in price a little bit, but they're still out there to be had. Yeah, there's, there's, and again, it's another cold pick where I feel like there's meat on the bone with those books. But, you know, you know another thing that I really take away from his, uh, his video is I see the CBSI logo on his hat. I see the Jane Foster Thor toy in his video. CBSI, toys, I don't know. That, that kind of sounds pretty good together. So that's kind of something interesting there. Yeah. That's going to bring us to our final list for the week. We got the hot and cold. Jack, what do you think about the list? I love the list. I'm definitely sending out a smoke signal for Ben Stein, man. Where is he at? Because we're missing his pick, uh, the writer of the hot 10. We need his hot pick. I think he is uh, got his finger on the pulse of what is hot and what is cold in comics. But other than that, the list is exceptional. Um, a lot of indie books, like you mentioned earlier, Um Again, not every book I necessarily agree with, but I understand why they were put on the list. And again, we've got some meat on the bone with some of these cold picks. Uh, you know, a lot of opportunities to buy. So make sure you're paying attention to those cold picks because what is cold one day will become hot again. Right. And if you guys watching in the live chat, let us know what your hot and cold picks are for the week. Because I'll tell you what we're going to start doing at the beginning of the next show. We're going to take some of those comments and we're going to discuss them here 
on the Hot and Cold Show. Yeah, absolutely. Community engagement, community involvement is something that's incredibly important for us in the Simplements Comics YouTube channel. We use the term Simplements Comics family for a reason, so we want to hear what you guys have to say. Also, make sure you tune in live tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern as Jack and I are back with the CBSI Bolo Show where we are recapping the hottest releases of the week and the CBSI Bolo list. Jack, is there anything else you want to say before we go? I would also say make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you aren't already. Hit that bell so you can get those notifications because we have a special CBSI announcement coming soon to the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. Yes, sir. And with that being said, wish you guys good night and thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Flex. I just wanna win. Yeah. LA BB who we running with. Yeah. Two, two, three, three. I'm on 10 again. Yeah. State your name. Big Ben Dope on Flame. I just switched the lanes. Damn, he did it again. I just flipped the pain.